COVID-19 is one of the most indiscriminate viruses we have seen in our lifetime, and we are all affected in one way or another. As Namibia buckles under the collective trauma and grief of the pandemic, concerns have been raised about the long-term impacts on mental health. But there are tools that don't require leaving the house and that are freely available to help us cope under the strain of living through the third wave. We are all facing a very disruptive world at the moment. We are fighting an invisible enemy. Many of us are in a constant state of war. This pandemic evokes a lot of uncertainty. One of the ways that we need to tackle it psychologically is to tell ourselves that we can manage it. Despite uncertainty, we can manage and tolerate what is going on around us. So we should accept the new normal that you are in now because we do not know for how long COVID-19 will be here. So we should learn to live with COVID-19. You should always have someone to talk to, and I always call these people, you should have your 911. 911 is an emergency number. You should always have um, a place to feel so safe where you can express yourself without being judged and then we being understood to say so it's best to seek help. Therapy is important. All hospital there is a social worker so you go there you do not have to make an appointment. So I know we are all quite isolated right now. We can't have gatherings like we used to but we're also very lucky to have zoom and have skype and whatsapp so don't isolate yourself reach out go talk to people you do not need to and you should not go through all of this alone there's a lot of people that find it incredibly rewarding to help and assist because in all other ways they are powerless we we do have to create space for grief so our classic model of suppressing and numbing and just you know sweeping it under the rug that might have worked if we've lost one person but now we're losing three four five family members we're losing colleagues and friends and there's so much grief and bereavement right now that we simply can't suppress it and this is also really difficult if you can't have your classic funeral so we have to kind of be creative and have our own rights and have our own funerals and Talk to our loved ones. Face-to-face -face mental health support is very often out of reach of a lot of us. Even those who have the financial resources to access face-to-face -face mental health support often do not due to other barriers. So by making this 14-day mental health challenge available online to everyone, we really hope to start sparking a movement of daily practices amongst individuals that help to manage stress, to help manage anxiety. This challenge is really about teaching us techniques and practices to help deal with the stress of this new everyday life. Take care of yourself. Exercise, do gardening, whatever you're trying to keep yourself busy. And in our brave new world, every act of kindness makes a difference. And very often that kindness starts with being kind to yourself and using tools that are readily available to be present, to look after yourself, to deal with your loss, to deal with the grief, to deal with the emotions that we're facing and not just push them aside. We all have to limit our exposure to social media, especially those social media platforms that's just constantly the bearer of bad news. Have a time of the day, maybe in the morning or the evening, to check in with people that you love and care for or to phone them, but really watch out how much time you are spending on it. We all have a limit to our time and energy. It's our responsibility to preserve it. It's our responsibility to take care of ourselves because only then can we actually take care of other people that we love and care for. Of course, fear and anxiety affects our immune system. It pumps us full of adrenaline and cortisol, which then again makes it easier for us to be susceptible to infections. So we really do have to get rid of the cortisol and adrenaline in our bodies. And the healthiest way to do that is through exercise. And of course, we can also really help the symptoms of anxiety by actively slowing down our breathing. So if we inhale and we exhale for much longer, so slower exhales, it also really helps to calm down your nervous system so you don't feel so anxious. 
And maybe we also need to remind ourselves that this is a moment to be deeply grateful for what we have left. This is a moment to really focus on our relationships. And this is really a time to also try and find a little bit of light in the darkness. Do things that make you happy. Sing, play music, paint, work in your garden, go walk your dog, spend time with your family members that you have left. We really, really have to kind of live the life that we have, appreciate the relationships that we have, and really just take care of ourselves and take care of each other.